just a quick update on the uh, van which I've converted it's a T5 Volkswagen T5 transporter and it used to have 1.9 engine in it now it's electric full electric um, I've regularly been doing uh, so sort of anywhere between 30 and 65 miles a day sort of every day uh, the longest journey I've been on is 105 miles I did cheat and charge up a little bit because I was getting a bit worried um, I was about 35 miles away from home and I just wanted to get home so I, I, <laughs> I did plug in at a Tesco's and I charged up for free which was nice and I was there for about an hour I did some paperwork it wasn't like it was a, a great problem I did some paperwork I had some sandwiches and then I trundled my way home and on the way home did another job and in total that day I did 105 miles so pretty successful really um, yeah it's good I enjoy it I enjoy driving it every day I look really look forward to getting in it and going somewhere you know going off to the next next job series of jobs I do anything between sort of three and six ish jobs a day more or less um, so yeah it's been it's been absolutely brilliant it's, it's saved me a, a ton of money and charging it up each night couldn't be easy you just plug it in and it does its thing you know midnight to uh, uh, the early hours of the morning it's it's charged itself up I'm usually using anywhere between 20 and 45 kilowatts of power a night just charging the van but you equate that to uh, diesel costs it's really cheap to run um, I'm on Octopus so the, the price does vary so to be truthful about that um, usually it's anywhere between 12 pence a kilowatt and going down as low as a few pence a kilowatt quite regularly in the short time I've been with them and driving this van and on rare occasions you actually get paid to charge up they actually pay you money to charge <laughs> it's insane which has uh, been yeah it's been quite sort of exciting times one night they went negative electricity I think I nearly melted the wire going to the house <laughs> got, a bit over, got a bit carried away and I had everything going um, so yeah be careful not to do that I've made a few little modifications to the van as I've been using it I now have all of the cooling is run through the heater matrix for the winter and in the summer um, or when at the flick of a switch you can run it through its normal radiator I will be increasing the size of its normal radiator for the summer when it got up to 40 degrees uh, C which is pretty unusual really for England but it's become over the last three years has become quite regular um, it was a bit of a struggle for it to cool itself down at the higher speeds it was pretty scorchio so yeah a slightly bigger radiator wouldn't hurt um, the fan I've been using for cooling it down uh, it's on its way out bearings are, bearings are shot I have another one coming from eBay and we'll have to consider uh, using better quality fans I think in the future they're now temperature regulated so as the temperature goes up it comes on um, that works well with the winter setup it comes on at 27 degrees um, but surprisingly 27 degrees of uh, warm fluid on a day when it's minus 4 and everything's pretty frigid and I've done nothing else to preheat the van it's quite uh, quite adequate it's, it's, it's pleasant actually it's very pleasant to be in there and um, I've uh, got the van a sign written and I also uh, racked out the back of the van for my work I often carry large amounts of, well large amounts, I carry a selection of um, AGM batteries because that's what the mobility scooters that I often work on mobility scooters and power wheelchairs I work on that's what they use and over the last lockdown a lot of such machines haven't been um, charged because people have got other things to be doing and they're not going out on them regularly and the sad fact is that there's been a lot of um, batteries needed people wanting to make sure that their machines are good and they won't break down has been something else so I've 
I've had work over over the past year. Uh, usually I do about sort of twenty thousand miles, and, and this year I've done fourteen. So it's been a little a little bit less, but um, it's okay. We're surviving. I'm thinking about uh, new projects, so it, life can't be that bad. Yeah, and if you get to do an electric vehicle and you get it on the road and you get it moving, it's it really is a bit of a buzz. A uh, very positive feeling. I, was, I think I was flying for the first uh, month or so that I had it on the road. I got, yeah, Cloud Nine stuff, and that's all with a, a Siemens motor and uh, Scott Drive inverter. Um, some cheap Chinese uh, chargers now. Um, the Brusa chargers did fail me quite early on, um, which was a bit of a bit of a bind because they were damned expensive uh, even the second hand stuff so I know where I'm going for my charges next time um, I think two uh, 3.3 kilowatt charges from AliExpress were less than 500 quid um, up to the door so yeah that's, that's pretty good so yeah that's where I'm going next time and they're doing charges that have a DC to DC converter built into them so that's that's an interesting concept so you get your 12 volt power as well and maybe even running two of those and having the DC output for the 12 volt disconnected on one of them so if one fails you can use the power from the other one just swap over connectors put them on Anderson connectors or something like that I just thought anyway the uh, batteries the way they are on the inside but using the Nissan Leaf batteries I don't think there was a better way of actually getting those batteries um, safely strapped down and weatherproofed. I did try and put the battery pack underneath as you might see in some of my earlier videos but that was just a bit of a disaster. It, it just had um, tragedy written all over it really. It was going to go wrong. So I decided to bin that send it all off to the scrapyard, all the, the old battery box and all the batteries themselves and I kept those and uh, they all went into the van and then later on added a second uh, battery pack and that's what's enabled me to have the the range of about 100 miles um, yeah I couldn't be happier uh, the next van I'm doing a video on and can hopefully do us which I'm actually sat in this is this is the next project um, I'm not too sure how fast this is going to happen because it's I've got to pay for it all um, but I'm really looking forward to that after the, the last one as soon as you finish one you want to you want to start another which is a bit mad really but um, this one I'd like to be a camper van and uh, a long range camper van with four wheel drive and all sorts of other uh, awesome stuff so we did also have a little bit of trouble with uh, drive couplings I meant that the van returned to home uh, uh, with the indignity of rope and friends um, a couple of times but it was it was always the same problem it was the coupler between the motor and the gearbox and it was part well it's all my own fault I don't blame anyone else um, the coupler that I bought had the spline for the Siemens motor it was a little bit on the loose side and I simply sleeved that adapted it to uh, also have the spline for the gearbox first motion shaft and that wore out the pitch provided here hopefully um, and that unfortunately wore out it was chortling and wobbling around and chortling is always bad if you're chortling you need to do something about it um, so I had chortling it was chortling away like a good one and um, it decided to well it wore out all of these splines and it stopped going down the road so yeah that wasn't such a great day um, but what I've done is improved it I went to EV West they had a block of steel with the correct spline for the Siemens motor EDM'd out. It was a, a wire EDM machine 
that they'd had they had gone to a machinist with with such a machine and they'd actually machined out the spline and awesome job it it's well to to give you some idea what that's all about they machined it so accurately that you had to heat up the billets to actually get it onto the end of the Siemens motor but not all the machine was done so my little Myford lathe there was a huge lump of metal in the lathe and uh, I had to whittle out the the back of this to take the motor shaft and get, all, get everything right basically down to some very very close tolerances and luckily I did it and heated it up and managed to get it on the motor um, my CNC milling machine was broken so I had to think of a way of drilling the holes accurately and what I ended up doing was 3D printing a drill jig using bearings in this piece of plastic to work as drill guides and I managed to drill all the parts accurately enough that when the motor is spinning at 6000 rpm it doesn't shake itself to bits in actual fact you can't feel any vibration at all uh, even when you're you know you've got your hand right on the motor or whatever trying trying to actually detect such a thing um, it all runs very smoothly I've also got these this coupling now goes through a uh, BMW drive shaft donut so it's a big rubber um, thing with six metal sleeves I think there are six metal sleeves uh, three of which go to one side three of which go to the other and that's what couples the drive together and that it allows a little bit of cush and movement in the system which I think is possibly important I thought it was a good idea at the time I've done it and so far so good on that we've done about 11,000 miles so I think that was a worthwhile mod I'd also like to thank everybody for the questions and hopefully I'll get to answer some of these in future videos as we go forward with the new van um, and I've, I've tried to you know answer those questions hopefully you know reasonably uh, in the comments so if you have uh, not checked go back please go back and check the comments and, and, and read all of those um, thanks very much for all the positive feedback um, on this project um, yeah I, uh, some of you are actually in my local area which is really weird but uh, I've been spotted like some sort of rock star or something I'm not um, but uh, yeah no it's all cool and uh, um, hopefully once this pandemic -y thing is all sorted we can all go and have a coffee or something you never know I've, you know, <laughs> I haven't got that many subscribers it's doable um, but yeah Anyway, so just thanks for all your comments and uh, yeah thanks very much anyway thank you for watching and um, I hope to see you again soon